So I think we we'll move ahead and Dr. Pooja Kamar will be now speaking on customized PTK for keratoconus. Over to you, Pooja. Thank you, ma'am. And I would like to uh, thank Namrata ma'am and the entire AIOS team for uh, inviting me here and putting up this program together. Uh, there was a lot of learning from all the seniors uh, who spoke before me. Today, I'm going to be talking about customized PTK for keratoconic patients. Uh, I have no financial interests in the technique I'm going to be speaking. Um, so role of lasers in keratoconus is quite important nowadays because as, like nowadays, as my previous speakers have spoken, it's not just about the, uh, you know, just uh, halting the progression. Uh, this keratoconic eyes have poor uh, vision. A lot of them have poor contact lens fit and they have increased abrasions. So lasers in keratoconus works wonder, uh, wonders uh, when it comes to uh, solving all these problems. Our group has published this 5-point nomogram before, which talks about that uh, when you can do a laser-based cross-linking, uh, the corneal thickness should, more, uh, should be more than 450 uh, microns and it should have a, a moderate disease. But let's see this case example. This is a moderate keratoconus with a thickness of 450 microns uh, with a cylinder of minus 5.5 and best corrected visual acuity of 6 by 9. Uh, but when we planned a laser-based cross-linking for this patient, if you can see that the maximum ablation was going above 80. Now, we all know it's a standalone rule that uh, any patient with this, uh, any in any keratoconic eyes, the ablation should not go beyond 40 to 45 microns. And here it is 81 microns. So what do we do? This is a moderate eye disease, moderate keratoconic eye, eye disease with a good pachymetry and the patient's uh, quality of vision is poor. Are we justified in just doing a cross-linking? Uh, the, uh, the answer is no. Uh, we have devised a technique by our uh, group where we just customize the laser ablation and the depth in the area of cone. Uh, we do not fire the entire uh, six millimeter zone, but just in the area of uh, the cone, uh, we do a laser. How can we do it? Uh, we need we use a Schwinn based platform, the PTK uh, format uh, in that uh, Schwinn based plat platform. Mm, sorry, I can. And uh, we go to the AF mode, and now we uh, we type in the uh, we enter the depth of ablation, how much it should be. So we I'll come to that. How, what all uh, you know? How we uh, devise the depth of ablation, then we measure the size of the cone and all the parameters are entered here. Now, let me go to how we measure the size of the cone and how these parameters are entered uh, in the uh, software, which is already there. Uh, you go to the tools, you select the distance uh, part and you then measure the horizontal and the vertical uh, diameter of the cone. Uh, and then you note down these parameters and you note down that how offset, like how distance the cone uh, is from the center. We, real, we need to find out what is the offset of the cone from the center of the pupil. Uh, then once we have the parameters, we enter everything like the long axis of the cone, the short axis of the cone, which degree it is in, the offset radius, how far the cone is from the pupillary area, because we need to make sure that the ablation happens in that area. Uh, we do take the epithelial thickness of the patient because our criteria is to burn 15 to 20 microns more than the epithelium thickness, not more than that. So it, in, in addition to it, it doesn't go beyond 70 microns of ablation in the cone area. Uh, and this is how uh, we devise the planning and this is how it looks. Uh, and then we go ahead with the planning. The added advantage here is now a lot of people ask us that, how do, are you sure that, you know, it's going to fire on the cone and not uh, anywhere else? The advantage here is, if you can see here, the SCC. SCC is nothing but static uh, cyclotorsion check. Uh, you have measured the scans in the supine position, but whenever the patients are in, uh, sorry, a uh, sitting position, but whenever the patients are in supine position, it, take, it takes care of the cyclotorsion and it makes sure that the laser is fired in the area of cone. And this is just one of the results and uh, of how the patient is behaving from minus 5.5. The patient has gone to 2.5 diaptric cylinders at six by six and, uh, and the vision quantity has also improved. So uh, everyone has heard about the topo guided PRK with simultaneous cross linking. Now we are talking about a new technique. So it's always important to compare whether the new uh, technique, which is the trek with cross linking, uh, the outcomes uh, along with the TPRK procedure, which has been uh, routinely performed every day. What we found was that in both the procedures, the TREK and the TPRK, 
both the patients had similar uh, gain of line and the ch- uh, change the similar magnitude of flattening in both the procedures was observed on axial curvature maps so even though we are burning 40 microns in a tprk procedure we are just burning tw- uh, 20 microns here in addition to the epithelium so the uh, the ablation is lesser than the tprk cross linking however the quantity or uh, quantity of vision and the flattening is similar in both the procedures and also there were similar aberration profiles in both the uh, procedures uh, trek and tprk and post op quality and quantity of vision was also found to be similar in both these procedures so the advantage here is that yes you are doing a laser based procedure in the cone area however you are not making the cornea uh, uh, you know you are not uh, compromising but the added advantage is the quantity quality of vision is similar and even the flattening is similar in this uh, procedure now what if the corneal thickness is less than 400 microns now uh, are we still justified in doing a uh, cross linking for this patients the answer is yes now we have a uh, calculator where we can customize the fluence uh, for 3 millivolts or 9 millivolts as well so the first choice of uh, management for this patients would not be a keratoplasty but we can still go ahead and do a cross linking a uh, procedure and this algorithm was divided devised by uh, the father of cross linking abhat uh, swal himself we have just converted it into a calculator where we just enter the thickness and at the end uh, and which uh, protocol we would like to do whether the 3 millivolt or a 9 millivolt and what percentage of drop and at the end it tells us that based on your thickness what should be your fluence time the riboflavin soakage time is going to be the same but the only change is going to be fluence time and it actually prevents the post op uh, scarring this is what we do we just uh, cal- enter the uh, thickness and it shows what fluence time it should be the results have been uh, good in uh, this technique as well when we use the next uva calculator in addition to our laser based cross linking it stabilizes uh there is no scarring there is no loss of endothelium or damage to the endothelium cells and even in this technique we see a good demarcation line post surgery thank you thank you